Hey everybody, welcome back to Photo Beast. I'm your host, Dion, for all things photography. Today, we're going to do a small little test. We're gonna dive into the mesmerizing world of bokeh, or bokeh, is it? It's an ongoing issue, just like ISO, ISO. But anyways, what I would like to do is to find out which lens can actually achieve the best bokeh and give us basically that dreamy background effect that we all desire. Now we have the trusty Nifty 50 f1.8. This is probably one of the lowest aperture lenses I have. I have a 35 1.8, but it's connected to a monitor right now and it's got teleprompters and stuff on it. I didn't want to disassemble that. Plus 50 versus 500 sounds better. And then we also have the Beastly 500 f4. Now we're looking at 50 millimeters versus 500 millimeters. 1.8 versus 4 which one will give us the better outcome and the dreamier background. With that said, let's get started and dive right in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot the 50 millimeter just to see what kind of my field of view is so I can try to match it with the 500, which I'll probably have to back up a few feet. So I'm just gonna uncap the lens, set him down for a second, and take this little monster off here. And let's see what we can do. Now, our subject today is technically going to be a small owl over here. And this little guy was presented to me from my beautiful wife. She wanted to get me something where I could actually make videos. And I decided to use a bird feeder just to give it a little, little bit of realism. I'm actually gonna record the screen too, so you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing. There we go. The ISO don't matter. We're gonna go ahead and deal probably one square of the frame just to give us kind of a Let's get two shots there. All right. Now let's take this little guy off right here and let's put the 500. And like I said, I'll probably have to back up for this one to say the least. Now, let's see if we can fill the frame. I'm gonna just hand hold this like I usually do. I probably have to step a little close, which is a first. Let me make sure my stabilization's on. I'm a little shaky today, a lot of coffee. All right, I see us right here. I got two shots each, okay? All right, so we got, I'm a little too close for the depth of field. Let me hold this right here. There. We kind of filled the frame just to see what everything looks like. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is give you guys a small surprise. So now we got our pictures all the way from 50 to 500. Let's go inside, thaw out, have a cup of cocoa, maybe it's coffee, and put these in DxO or Lightning and see. So today we had an epic showdown between two lenses to determine who produces the creamiest, most beautiful blurred background, also known as bokeh. Welcome back to the Battle of the Bokeh. Here we have the classic 50 millimeter lens. It's perfect for everyday photography. It's known for its versatility, its wide aperture range, starting from F 1.8 like this one, all the way down to an impressive 1.2. So let's see what the test pictures look like. Moving over here to our DxO this time instead of Lightroom. I've been playing with DxO this last week and I absolutely am loving the new DxO 7 and higher uh, softwares. Right now, I believe it's like 7.1.2, but the new 7 is, uh, I give it a thumbs up for real. So on our first picture here, if you look at the first image, this was done with our 50 millimeter f1.8 as you can see 
the 50 millimeter, it does a great job of creating a soft background blur, emphasizing on our adorable owl subject. 50 millimeters is also one of the most preferred lenses of portrait photographers. To have such a sharp lens with beautiful creamy bouquet in such a small package, it's just, it really is just amazing. Now let's look at the 500 millimeter. Ugh, this beats to the lens. It's all about bringing the distant subjects closer while maintaining excellent image quality. This is why wildlife and bird photographers prefer this lens. Also, the F4 aperture, it really helps to allow your autofocus to work faster and more accurate in low light, especially in those early mornings and late evening shots. Those type of situations, keeping your ISO levels in check. Now, let's go check out a picture from the 500 for comparison. This was our F1.8 50 millimeter. Now here is the 500 millimeter. So if you look at the background, we just crop in a little bit. You can see this really, really good compression. If I go over here to this image, which also was taken at the 500 f4, you can also see that compression as well. If you look at the bouquet, it's dreamy, it's velvety smooth. The telephoto compression, it really enhances the subject separation, making the owl just pop against the beautifully blown out background. Just really just incredible. So let's talk for a few reasons scientifically why these longer lenses produce better compression aka bokeh number one is a longer focal length or longer barrel length telephoto lenses have a longer focal length compared to wide angle lenses this longer focal length it creates a narrower angle of view resulting in a magnified image the magnification effect compresses the depth of field thus making the background appear more out of focus as compared to wider angle lenses. So in simpler terms, telephoto lenses magnify the scene, making the background appear closer and larger in relation to the subject, causing enhanced background blur. Number two, compressed perspective or the compression effect. Telephoto lenses, they produce a compressed perspective, wherein elements within the image always appear to be closer together than they actually are. This compression effect, it visually separates the subject from the background, creating a greater sense of depth, if, especially if you look at this image. It also helps to isolate the subject and contribute to enhanced background blur as the out-of-focus elements appear further away and softer due to the compression. This compression is a distant result of the extended barrel length enabling the lens to capture distant subjects and compressing the background for a more visually appealing image and enhancing the depth of field, thus creating a more pronounced background blur. Number three is the larger glass elements. Telephoto lenses typically have larger glass elements and optics to accommodate their longer focal lengths. The larger glass elements, they collect and focus light more effectively resulting in enhanced image quality, sharpness, and better bouquet. The increased glass and barrel size allows for better light gathering capabilities, leading to smoother and more defined out-of-focus areas. In summary, the longer barrel length, the larger glass elements of the telephoto lenses contribute to better bouquet, providing greater compression effects, improved light gathering capabilities, sharper image quality, and a narrower angle of view. These combined factors result in more visually appealing and dreamy background blur, thus making telephoto lenses ideal for creating stunning bouquet in your photos. Together, these factors contribute to a shallower depth of field and increased background blur when using these telephoto lenses. However, it's important to note that factors like aperture, sensor size or film size, subject distance, and background distance will also affect the depth of field and the background blur. So next time you're contemplating your lens choice, keep in mind that size does matter when it comes to achieving that creamy bouquet that we all just love. Now, lastly, as promised, there's more. As a bonus, we have one more lens to showcase. Introducing the 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. It falls somewhere in the middle offering a compromise between the versatility of the 
50 millimeter and the compression of the 500. I don't know if you noticed, but as I was walking away earlier from taking the pictures of the Owl, I actually had the 70 to 200 attached to the Canon R5. Let's look at some images real quick. The 70 to 200, it provides a nice balance of sharpness, background blur, and subject separation. It's the perfect option when you can't decide between the extremes. It's not only great in wildlife, but it is a go-to lens for many portrait and wedding photographers. This is one professional lens that will never let you down. That's it for today's video of the Battle of the Bouquet. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below letting us know your favorite lens for achieving that creamy background blur. Until next time, keep capturing those magical moments. Keep your eye out for the next video like this where we take the 85 f1.8 versus the 800 f11 and we will see who wins. Will the barrel length and the size of the glass still prevail or will a low f1.8 beat an f11? Stay tuned and find out. I can't wait to see which one of these wins. See you guys in the next one.